This episode may contain content not suitable for some audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The Mystery of the Exmoor Body in the Bag On the 13th of March, 2002, something mysterious was found in Exmoor. It had been a chilly, windy Wednesday morning when a park ranger began his rounds of the Moorland National Park. He soon came across a pile of bin bags that had been thrown close to the road. This wasn't unusual, however. People would often dump rubbish and sometimes animal remains along this stretch. The ranger started clearing up the bags and assumed they were the remains of some kind of pet. After completing his rounds, he proceeded to the Devon and Somerset Staghounds Kennels, where the bones were going to be safely incinerated. But once the bags were opened and searched, a worrying discovery was found. These were the severely decomposed remains of a human body. But who was this person, and how had they ended up there? Staff at the kennels immediately called the police. An analysis was carried out on the remains to try and recover any evidence that remained. They found that the body had been wrapped in a single duvet cover and a single green bed sheet before being placed in the plastic bags. They also discovered underwear, Adidas shorts, and a gold necklace with the Quran verse engraved into it, as well as a white pillowcase and a stereo wire. But other than those items, police had very little to go on. They quickly began the painstaking process of trying to piece the clues together and find out who this man or woman was and who had been responsible for their suspected murder. This proved to be harder than anyone could have imagined and would end up leaving us with more questions than answers. Detective Chief Inspector Barry Douglas took lead in the investigation and he revealed in a press interview regarding the case that the body had been identified as that belonging to a man aged between 20 and 30 years old. He was roughly 5 foot 9 inches and had dark hair. They also released the fact that despite the man having been found in March 2002, they believed he had been murdered in either 2000 or 1999. Police were quick to ask the public for assistance in the case and asked for any witnesses to come forward. They particularly appealed to horse riders or people who walked in the area. The police wanted people to think back from the months prior if they had seen anything of any relevance or spotted any person or people acting strangely. But to this day, the identity of the victim remains unknown. This has made an already difficult investigation near impossible. The police looked through 2,366 missing persons on the national and international database and were able to discount 2,357 of them. The remaining nine people were investigated, but no solid leads came from them either. As for any witnesses, public statements discussing witness statements have been few and far between, which makes it safe to assume that they have been pretty scarce. Potentially, some people may have come forward to authorities, but that information has not been made public. The police continued to make multiple requests for appeals. Unfortunately, They haven't been given much to work with, other than what they already knew. The investigation is believed to have cost around £120,000. 
Forensics were able to link the white pillowcase to a linen hire service that provides linen to hotels all over the southwest of England. They also theorised that the stereo wires may have been used to tie the man up. They have a full DNA profile of the man and were able to discover the necklace had been made in Pakistan. The verse engraved on it is also known as one of the most important verses of the Quran, references Allah being Almighty. This verse is also sometimes called off evil spirits. Forensics were also able to determine that the man's body had been stored somewhere, potentially in a fridge or freezer for the years after his and before he was dumped in the moors. Based on isotopic testing carried out on the remains, the assumption can be made that the man may have lived in the local area for a few years prior, even up to 10 years before his murder. This pretty much rules out the theory that he was murdered out of the country and brought in. The following is a list of potential theories about who he was. The man may have been an illegal refugee working in the Exmoor area. Maybe he even worked in the hospitality industry and had access to those linens himself. If a business knowingly hires illegal workers, they would be unlikely to report such a person as missing. Maybe he was just a shy man who enjoyed a solitary life, and once he went missing, people just assumed he had moved on. He could have been involved in some sort of illegal activities in the area, and was potentially a member of a gang, which of course would have been a reason for him not being reported missing. Now, on to the theories about what could have happened to him. The man may have gotten into a fight with someone at his workplace, which may have escalated to murder. Then, his body may have been hidden in some sort of fridge or freezer, and later moved and dumped on the moor. He could even have been killed by a random attacker or in some sort of dispute and again stored somewhere. Some have even theorised that he was killed by a family member, potentially having something to do with their religious beliefs. This is by no means painting the Muslim faith as violent, but there have been rare instances of honour killings happening to family members. As for theories of where the man came from, there is the possibility of him being a refugee. The Exmoor area does have direct coastal access where refugee boats have been reported to have arrived. While this is not a certainty, it would explain why he was never reported missing. But let's just say that he was a man who was born in the country and had been living in the area for a decent length of time like the police believe. Why was he not reported missing? Surely he had friends who noticed his absence. This is one of the many mysteries in this case that makes it so hard to wrap your head around. Another curiosity is the necklace. There is the chance that it was not actually the man's in the first place and could have potentially been left with him by the killers. Possibly as they were feeling guilty about what they had done. The necklace points away from the theory of a robbery gone wrong. Maybe it was simply left to throw the police off. It is clear from the start that the police believed that while it may be tricky, they would find out who this man was. In March 2002, Detective Chief Inspector Barry Douglas said, There are a lot more forensic tests which need to take place, and these will take days and weeks rather than hours. Our main priority now is trying to find out who he is and how he died. 
we are also trying to establish exactly how long the remains have been lying on that part of Exmoor. In May of the same year, a reconstruction was released on what the man may have looked like based on his skull. Police hoped this would prompt someone who recognised the man to come forward. Barry Douglas said, We do feel that somebody must know who he is. Someone can't just die and be disposed of and have no family or friends that know he is missing. Sadly, no one has ever come forward and as of January 2022, Exmoor's mysterious body in a bag remains a mystery.